Sonic X Episode 13. After I skipped past the recap at the start of the second part, epic music plays and we see Knuckles riding on a missile sent towards Eggman's tower so we can get over to it. But why? He's supposed to be looking for the Master Emerald. What's he even planning to accomplish? He doesn't say. And wouldn't he get hurt from the missile hitting the wall? Then Rouge and her team get threatened by a robot, but we immediately cut away from that in the action series so we can get reminded of Eggman's harmless giant fan. Somehow Amy's not being sent away just because she's holding the stick in the ground. She's just standing up normally. So I thought she was completely unaffected by it at first. There's an impressive amount of guts as Tails is even unconscious at first, though I don't see why. Then after all that tense padding, Sonic shows up to bail his friends out again. He defies physics not being affected by the wind, doesn't explain that that's just a special magical ability of his, and knocks the giant fan over without even having a ring to justify it, and humiliates Eggman in one hit effortlessly. What a creator's pet. Then all of a sudden they get threatened by a giant robot, and Sonic just now gets a ring, letting him spin dash straight through it and completely destroy him one hit. One paragraph. That's not an action scene! This is an action series! So Tails gets an emerald just like that. He hears Eggman's voice because somehow he was still here instead of being sent far away. And Tails gets robbed of his emerald by the crane of the Eggmobile, being made to look like a complete idiot. Chris Lee shows responsibility by lampshading that's dangerous for his friend to come with him and keep doing nothing. Not that it gets through to her, and the heroes fly away on the plane. Sonic's victory was way too easy, and so was Eggman's. I thought he would be without his Eggmobile. How did he even survive that fall without getting injured? Rouge succeeds and high fives Topaz, and the robot sidekicks continue trying to blast missiles. This time they do it against Eggman because they think he's an enemy airship. Surprisingly, the announcer says that the attack on Eggman's base appears to be failing, even though it's surrounded by smoke and is constantly being hit by missiles. I guess we're supposed to assume that the tower is magically immune to missiles because the material is just that good? Like it's made of carbon nanotubes? So that's why they think they're failing? Why would the announcer assume that so easily and say that? Shouldn't she know what a big demotivator that is for the scared crowd? By the way, do big TVs actually exist outside in cities where a whole crowd of people in a city can conveniently gather on to watch one TV? Because I don't think I've ever seen one in real life. It would make more sense if these people were all watching individual TV monitors, but this is less effort showing them all one crowd. Then Danny says that he sees the X-Tornado on the video, and the announcer sees Sonic, with the video magically having zoom in enhanced technology to clearly show him off. And Danny says it's Sonic. This provides a good explanation for why the city's people would learn who Sonic is and that he's the hero. Rouge says she'll handle the next robot, and tells Topaz to lead her team to the generator room. Naturally, they run into trouble because some shooter machines rise out of the floor, and it sure was convenient for them that they took so long to start firing to give them time to duck, otherwise that would have been a dark reality in Sue's moment, showing how threatening Eggman would really be to normal people. Knuckles then punches a hole in them to save them. Sure was convenient that he even had the idea to come here in the first place, and yet he's asking them what they're doing here. What led him here? At least in Sonic F, he easily explained, I'm looking for an emerald. He could have said, my emerald radar is leading me here, I'm looking for the master emerald. He says the generator room will be impossible to get into. How does he know that for sure? He then says arrogantly that he can't wait to mess with Sonic's ego by saying that he helped beat Eggman and Sonic did nothing. I guess it does make sense that Knuckles would hate Sonic because this Sonic doesn't have good social skills, so he wouldn't have charisma to him and be nice to him, but it's still annoying of Knuckles. Surprisingly, it's actually lampshaded word for word that he has an inferiority complex. Eggman, back in his tower, starts sending a ton of missiles after Tails' plane, and while Eggman somehow doesn't get dizzy when his chair uselessly spins around, Tails pilots the plane, doing all the dodging, while well, Sonic gets all the credit for doing absolutely nothing. I love that Sonic F made fun of this with the dialogue. They're cheering for Sonic, but he's just standing there on the plane, as Tails is doing all the work. Tails fires with a missile, and Sonic headbutts straight through a wall, somehow not getting a concussion and dying. It's not like he has a ring, either. They keep forgetting to give him a ring to justify stuff. This is why they're not handling rings correctly. 
They have this unique lore with it, and then they constantly forget about it. It just makes it more confusing. Then Eggman threatens Sonic with a giant robot as Sonic looks intimidated. Oh, never mind. He cuts away instead of giving us an action scene. Topaz is told that the demolition things are all set, and Knuckles says that he saw Rouge go that way, and she complains that Eggman's keeping the emerald somewhere else. Why isn't Rouge just outright telling them that he want that she wants to get the emerald away from Eggman? The robot sidekicks lock them all into a room with a steel door. This is gonna lead to a lot of padding, isn't it? Topaz panics because there's no time to defuse the charge, and they could potentially get destroyed by the bombs they set. Finally, we cut back to Sonic, who gets knocked up to the ceiling, and they kick through the wall. Eggman brags, and of course he's fine despite having to struggle to get out of the wall. He gets sent into the wall again, and Eggman brags that his robot's powered by two Chaos Emeralds as a way of bragging about how he's met his match. Eggman gets a call, so I wonder why the robot psychics didn't already know Knuckles, and had to be told they were their enemies. Well, at least these guys are humorous. Like, they made this Sonic X comic kind of worth it, and they were the funniest part of the whole comic. They made it halfway interesting. So I kind of, I grew to like these guys. As Eggman's distracted by the call, and somehow doesn't bother to keep fighting Sonic because Deus Ex Machina, Sonic gets out from under the robot hand and jumps onto the robot's leg, runs and jumps impossibly high, and crashes through the other side of it without a ring. This gets him the emeralds because he somehow knew exactly where to jump to get them, when logically he should have had to try multiple times. I'd rather have that be the padding, because that means the action scene takes longer instead of non-action stuff that's boring and not fulfilling. So he powers up with just two emeralds and flies through the robot multiple times over and over again to make it blow up, surrounded by a golden aura the whole time. Really? Just two emeralds gives him a sort of super form? Well, Eggman only had two, as the previous episodes told us. But wait, he stole the yellow emerald. Apparently, Sonic powered up with the yellow and blue emeralds, but where did the green emerald go? Anyways, Sonic's super form flying frees Knuckles and lets him and his friends escape the exploding tower. Not that it matters, since Eggman will somehow find a way to keeping a competent villain past this. The crowd watching cheers because Eggman's tower is being destroyed, and everyone cheers for Sonic when he lands in the plane. This was a pretty good episode. It was pretty epic and tense, and it did a good job of pretending to be a significant episode like a finale where Eggman's taken down once and for all. Of course, there's tons of episodes after this with Eggman in them, so obviously it doesn't really matter that his tower got blown up. It feels like it lessens Rouge's contribution that Sonic was damaging the tower with a super form though, because she guided a whole army to the tower specifically to blow it up with bombs. But to be fair, all he did was break holes through whatever his small figure happened to fly through. The bombs were a lot more helpful for destroying a tower so well made that all those missiles couldn't destroy it beforehand. The crowd realizes Sonic's a hero and cheers for him even though he took until the ending to actually do something to help. Danny should have cheered for Tails too. He's the pilot. And I like that the fight with the mecha and Sonic was tense because Sonic really struggled with it until the end. It's surprising that Sonic got super with merely two emeralds, not even five. And maybe if the show was structured properly and Eggman ended up getting all seven emeralds, it would have made proper sense instead of so many episodes being pure filler that by the time we got to this point, it made less sense. What is it with Sonic in the show and headbutting through stuff instead of spin dashing? The latter makes more sense because he's a buzzsaw spinning around and flying ahead at Sonic speed, so he cuts into stuff. But here he just falls into a metal wall and breaks it somehow without injuring himself. Speaking of that, how the hell did Eggman avoid getting injured by the fall when he was sent away really high by that fan? It was so forced that he took the emerald from Tails that easily. It's like they rushed him getting it because they didn't think to have him get the emerald in the previous episode. The fan took a while without actually having a risk of hurting anybody, so it felt like padding. Though not entirely because at least it still added some tension. It was cool to see the episode and see how, realistically, the government would have taken action against Eggman if he was real and made a tower somewhere. I feel like the whole reason Sonic X exists is to make a show about that, but he's not taken down for good anyways. It feels like it's an episode plot that's suited for the finale, but it's not because we still have the adventure adaptations. 